Hello, and welcome to another YouTube Live. Haven't done a lot of these, but I'm going to do this one today. I'm just going to wait for a few minutes to see who pops in. Uh, today I am doing a mid to late 1770s hairstyle called Le Harrison, or the Hedgehog. Um, I love this hairstyle because it isn't what we commonly in the costuming community think it is or call it. The Harrison hairstyle, I wrote a blog post about it that's on the American Duchess blog this morning. The Harrison hairstyle in, was really marked by hair sticking straight up at the top, but it came into fashion appearing around 1776 all the way through to 1785 or so. It isn't just a frizzed hairstyle, there are specific things about it that I really want to play with. So. I'm getting dressed for a video today, a dressing video in a polonaise, so a mid-1770s dress, and I need to do my hair. So I thought, well, why don't I just do my hair live and hope it goes well? So right now, hi everybody, hi. <laughs> so right now, um, obviously, this is my hair. I haven't even brushed it this morning. It looks awful. There's a little bit of pomade in this from, um, yesterday because I did a hair test but this is this this is the, the yeah this is my hair <laughs> hi guys hi from Spain hi from Oklahoma hi from the Netherlands hi thanks for tuning in all right so I'm using hair pieces today I'm using all three hair pieces that we make and talk about in the book the 18th century guide to beauty uh, but I'm using them in kind of maybe a different way. So the major first big hair piece I'm using is the toupee. Now I've already put a cushion in this last night. This is actually my 1780s toupee. I didn't make another one for the 1770s, but you definitely can. Uh, it's been curled and I've put it over a donut form. Um, my hair test yesterday, my donut was too narrow and tall, so it kind of made me look like a conehead and then I got embarrassed and deleted my photo off Instagram because I was like, this actually sucks. But for a donut, I made a new one. You can use the instruction in the book. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar, this is the book I'm talking about. I know it's backwards. It's the American Duchess Guide to 18th Century Beauty. And we have a whole bunch of hair cushions in there. I've actually used the grub, but I've curled it into a donut. Um, now this is the grub from the book. And you can see if I put it on my head, it's actually too narrow. You don't want it to come in because then you get cone head. You want it to come out a little bit more. So you kind of want to have like reverse cone for your, for your donut hair. Um, so I made mine a little bit longer than the pattern in the book and then I just curled it back and then stitched the back together. It's also not as like super stuffed. And so I've put that in my hair piece over this side. And then I've just pulled the hair over it and pinned right up into the donut. I've left the top here sticking straight up because that's one of the hallmarks of the hedgehog, the Harrison style, is that the ends stick straight up. That's why it's called a hedgehog, but it's not going to just stay like this. I'm going to blend my own hair into this and then we're going to put a ribbon all the way around, banding around the top of this to kind of hold this in place. And that's also the other hallmark of a hedgehog Harrison hairstyle. So yes, I'm doing this live. I hope it doesn't suck. <laughs> we'll see how it comes out. Here we go. If you have questions while I do this, go ahead and pop them up on the screen and I will try to answer them. Um, and I'm just going to talk about everything that I'm doing <laughs> while I'm doing it. Okay. I have a big mirror in front of me. I have a little hand mirror here. <laughs> you can see my my sack in progress. Look at that. <laughs> and and then of course this is like the self camera. But this is this is kind of hard to do um, on yourself in general. So I hope the back of it comes out looking all right. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to part out, eek, tenuously part out the front of my hair from the back. 
and I'm going from the crown top here down roughly down straight to my ear or so see that nice line it doesn't have to be perfect Lord knows I don't ever get anything perfect Oop. okay and I'm not going to do anything with the back of my hair here. I'm going to completely cover this up. So I'm just going to pin curl it flat against my head so that it is out of the way. It doesn't have to be nice. It just has to be kind of like corralled. Mm -hmm. I'm using bobby pins for this. Of course, you know, parts of this would be a lady's own hair in the past, like the mullet hairstyle was de rigueur, it was the thing. So leaving your hair really long, your natural hair really long in the back, took care of the chignon part of the hair for you. Let's see, where are my comments? There we are, sorry. All messages are visible. Okay, I'm doing this on my phone for the first time. So bear with me. Uh, Sarah asks, is it okay if I list the steps as you do it just so it's in the video comments archive? Yeah, Sarah, by all means. Um, a note about how I'm doing my hair today is in the book we try to do everything, almost everything, as historically accurately as possible because we wanted to show, you know, how, how the hair was actually done. Today I'm doing, I'm using some modern tools. I'm using a, an electric curling iron. Um, that is actually a, like a crimping iron to do the front of my hair because I didn't um, curl my hair last night and I need to have some kind of wave or something going on in my hair in the front to get it to like stick to anything. So uh, you will see me use that iron. I'm going to use an elastic on my chignon. Um, you don't have to, you can just use pins, but I find the elastic, you know, helps. And I'm going to be using some buckles that I made. Um, these are glue curls that I made with a, a PVC pipe and um, hair extensions and glue last night. It's a wonderful modern, very modern method, um, but it works. I didn't do the best job, but you know, whatever, it works. I hate making buckles like for real, real. I absolutely hate it. And they, um, they take a long time. And if you have an event in the morning, let's say you're getting dressed and you need to like be out the door and in your car fast, um, the clip-in or the pin-in buckles, however they are made, are the best thing. Faux buckles are historically accurate. Um, you could send away and buy them uh, from various uh, hair makers, hair shop makers. Uh, there's lots of advertisements for them, but they weren't made with glue as far as I know. Okay, so I've just in the back of my hair here just flat against my head and that is all going to be covered and now I don't have to mess with it anymore yay all right the next move I'm gonna do is I'm going to crimp the front of my hair before I set to it with irons let's see here I wish my comments would stay up here. Okay, let me just go back real quick. Okay, cool, Sarah, I see, I see what you're doing. Okay, so I'm going to take my pomade, pomade, which of course there's recipes in the book. This is animal pomade. It's um, lamb, tallow, and pig's lard. And I'm going to heavily pomade the front of my hair. This is an absolutely vital step like obviously I'm not doing all of my hair because I'm not using all of my hair in the style but all 18th century hairstyles at least from 1750 onward rely really really heavily on pomade and powder that's like the whole point <laughs> the whole thing I like this method um, of curling of heat curling it heat curling is historically accurate to the 18th century but the product that they put in their hair to get the, the hair to hold the shape was the pomade. So imagine that I've got pomade, which is in a semi-solid state until it's heated up. And I'm going to put it all through my hair until my hair looks kind of greasy because it's literally greasy. 
and then I'm going to crimp it or curl it or crepe it with my irons. Um, obviously my iron is electric. It would have been heated on a brazier in the past over a fire or a flame, um, but I don't have a brazier, so I'm not going to, I wouldn't do that anyway, because I'd probably burn my hair off. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time. So I hit this with a heated iron and then I let it cool and it sort of, the pomade like re-solidifies and holds the shape into place. But I've got to have quite a bit of pomade on there. I'm, ooh, that's not enough. All right. Greasy, lovely, greasy hair. You like my look? I'm like emo. Kind of like, ah, from the... 2000s. All right, so I'm going to put a bit of powder on. Powder, really easy recipe. It's basically cornstarch with smell goods in it. Starch is the absolute best for powder. In fact, dry shampoos today that are good quality are made from starch because starch binds with the fats that you've just put in your hair or that you also have your own, you know, head fat coming out of your skull, <laughs> of your scalp. And it creates this like dry but pliable um, sculpy hair that all of the 18th century styles rely on for height. So there was no hairspray in the past, of course. So how did they get their hair to stick in these styles? Um, aerosol hairspray didn't come around till like this 50s or 60s or 40. Actually, I'm not sure. When, I'm not sure when hairspray was invented for sure, but it definitely wasn't the 18th century. Okay, I had a question. Uh, red threaded. I have a gas grill. You're crazy. <laughs> um, can coconut oil be used as a pomade? I don't want to use the animal products. We get that question a lot, and I've seen people actually have pretty good results with it. It doesn't chemically act exactly the same because the um, chemical composition is quite different from our body chemistry, it being a coconut and us being mammalian. I mean, some of us are coconuts, but you know. Also, I apologize for any barking dogs you may hear. It's live, I can't edit their barkiness out. Um, but as I said, I have seen people, come on messages, I have seen people um, have decent results with the coconut oil. Okay, um, sebum should now be known as head fat. <laughs> I'd rather say head fat than sebum to be honest, honestly I would. Okay, so I'm pretty liberally powdering this. I just use a blush brush to do this. Um, if you want to be fancy, you can have like a swan's down puff, but you know, whatevs. You need quite a lot of this stuff. And I'm just giving it a nice powder. Okay. Obviously, if you have really long hair, you're going to use quite a lot of pomade, quite a lot of powder. This is not the last application of powder that we're going to do. This is going to melt and be absorbed as soon as I hit it with the iron, but it helps the iron um, kind of do its job or it helps the hair kind of stick in position. Coconut oil, CC says, coconut oil is a bit too melty. Try melting it with some shea butter or cocoa butter and you'll have more pomade consistency. Um, that's a really good point. So pomade consistency, we've made a couple batches, different batches of pomade and different fats, um, whether they're animal or plant-based, have different consistencies. So if you, if you're doing animal and you use a lot of um, pork lard in your fat, uh, in your recipe, the pomade comes out really, really, really soft and really, really melty. And I actually kind of prefer that. If you use more mutton tallow, it comes out more crumbly and it takes longer for it to melt down. Some of the recipes actually call for a little bit of beeswax in there too, like for the harder pomades or the Marshall pomades. Uh, and that, I mean, imagine like melting beeswax with your iron. <laughs> And then, um, and then it re like it cooling off, like your hair is not going to be moving out of that position. <laughs> um, vegetable shortening, uh, even I've never actually used that for pomade, but by all means, experiment and let us know how it goes. <laughs> Lori asks, are we styling or, or are we cooking? A little bit of column A, a little column B, 
right about now I'm going to start cooking <laughs> with my curling iron. All right. Now, this is the bottom part of this. This is a three barrel crimpy wavy iron thing. Uh, <laughs> Um, my curling iron is has gone on walkabout. I'm not actually sure where it is. I think Abby has it. But I'm going to use this. Um, there's no evidence that I found that say that multi-barreled irons existed, but just regular single-barreled irons did, and Papio flat irons did. But for the sake of the need to get in the car out the door to the reenactment, I'm going to use this to put some wave in my hair. All right, let's try and do this without burning myself. And I'm not going to be too specific about it. Like, I'm not trying to do perfect waves. I'm just trying to just get some something going on here. It was crimpy, crimp, crimp. Uh, somebody says, are we going to start to hear it sizzle? I don't hear it sizzle yet. Maybe I don't have enough pomade. But when we were creping um, Nicole's hair, and when I creped Abby's hair too, in the book, she definitely could, could hear the sizzle by her ear. May have also burned Abby more than once. Sorry, Abby. <laughs> Trying not to burn myself. Um, Gabrielle says, I've made my pomade with coconut oil and beeswax, but I think I'm going to melt and add more oil because it's a little too hard. Yes, so the beeswax is used, oopsie, is used in um, hard pomades, which is like if you, oop, that went, okay. If you want your hair, <laughs> What is going on here? There we go. Nope, it's all fucky. Excuse me. <laughs> um, if you want your hair to stick like straight up, straight up in the front, then beeswax is awesome. But you have it's a really, really small amount um, that you add to the hair, to the pomade. Sorry. Um, love the pin curl walkthrough from a week ago. I can report have had some beautiful fluffy hair since. That makes me so happy. I'm never really sure if the way that I do my hair is like kosher, but it seems to work for me. Um, I mean, everybody has different hair types. So I can really only show you in these videos the way that I do my hair, which is really, really fine. Not thin, like I have a lot of hair, but it's fine hair and it tends to not want to hold a curl or a tease particularly well, bane of my life. But if you have thick, coarse hair or very, very curly hair, you know, the way that you're gonna do things is gonna be quite different. Now I've got some like 1990s kinda <laughs> Shakespeare and love curls going on. Look like a wet spaniel, that's the point. <laughs> Um, Liberty says, I had no idea how to use pomade on my curls until that video, so thank you to the pink curl video. Yes, it's magic, and I am using the 18th century pomade, just a really, really small amount, and it's like, whoa, where's this been all my life? Magical stuff. Okay, I like messed that one up. <laughs> my hair's the same way, lots of it, but very fine. Yeah, so Sarah, then these techniques should work for you decently well. Um, but it's all about experimenting. I mean, I usually fly by the seat of my split drawers when it comes to like getting up on the morning and doing my hair. But yesterday I did a hair test and it was like, oh, well that, okay, now I see I need to do this, this, and this. So doing a hair test, I know it takes a lot of energy, but doing a little test before and just getting used to how the products work. <laughs> Look at this bullshit. Um, you know, it's important. It's important because then you can just throw it all together. <laughs> Hot the day of. Uh, Sarah says the book arrived last week with my Victoria Congress boots. So uh, uh, Vienna. So this is good timing. Perfect. Um, if you're confused about what your hair type is, we do list hair types in the book. I think it's towards the front, um, and we try to do styles um, throughout the different tutorials for different hair types. So if you have, if you want to do like a really curly style, but if you're, you know, a um, very straight, maybe you have Asian hair, for instance, we used um, Jenny as the model to do the Asian hair for the 1770s, but the techniques in that chapter, you should still be able to kind of like apply them to whatever style you want to do. Okay. Sarah asks, um, so if I don't have a crimping iron, would a regular iron put those crimps in it? If you, if you kind of like flip it 
up and down. Um, you can also pin curl your hair or put it on like really small rollers or I've seen people do straws, which was brilliant. You just want some kind of texture. It's not necessary to have texture 100% um, in the front of your hair. God, this looks horrible. I love it. But I like to have a little bit of wave in the, the 1770s styles. Um, in the book, we did both Lori and Jenny, so this, the beignet donut hair and the ski slope hair, with just straight hair. We didn't curl the hair at all, and that looks gorgeous. It looks beautiful, um, but I like to have some wave so that it kind of like sticks together a bit more. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ellen says, love this. I have abundant baby fine shoulder length hair. So <laughs> me too. So I am definitely needing this, this video. Awesome. I'm curious about rag curls. Any tips and, and tricks? Elizabeth asks. Um, rag curls. Yeah. I mean, they're not wet setting of any kind is not accurate to the 18th century. But honestly, if that's the best way that your hair curls, do that the night before because there's nothing like getting up in the morning and having like all of this ready to go. You don't have to crimp it, you don't have to do heat, you don't have to do any of that. Um, I've rag curled before. I tend to get my hair kind of tangled and ratted up when I do that so I actually prefer um, little sponge rollers like the smallest ones I can get. Okay, you can use hairpins to make crimpy type waves. That's a really good um, tip, Lenore. Okay, so I got my crimpy mess of hair. You'll notice like there's no powder showing in this anymore. So I'm just going to hit this again. More powder. All right. Now most of this is going to like comb right out when I get to the styling part, which will be very, very soon. Front of my hair is now prepped. Okay. <laughs> now for the fun parts. All right. So I mentioned at the beginning, <laughs> um, before we go on, Elizabeth says, awesome. Thanks. I like heat less, uh, heat less as much as possible. I am absolutely on board with that. I don't like to use heat on my hair at all. Um, so that iron was like, but you know, whatever I'm here when we're doing it. Okay. The first hair piece I like to put on is actually the chignon. This is the long hair that goes at the back. This is hair extensions that have been stitched together and then I've got wig clips back here. This covers all the sins on the back of the hair and I like to put it on pretty high and first so that I don't have to get up under the toupee Ooh, to get this into place. Oopsie. Clip please. Clip please, okay. a look. You like my look? <laughs> um, C says, so glad I'm catching this. I've been looking for a video demo of the hedgehog or similar and haven't had any luck finding it. So see more just to note, this is a 1776 or so hedgehog, which differs from what we call a hedgehog in reenactor land, uh, which is the generic term for any kind of frizzy 1780s hairstyle. That's not actually all it is. in the olden times in the 17, about 1776 or so to 1785. So while that does encompass the frizzy hairstyle, also the tall hairstyles is kind of where hedge, hedgehog started. So that is the style I'm doing today, but it's not gonna be what you are possibly expecting. Okay, so I'm just gonna get mesh and young kind of like pinned in here. I haven't curled this because curling iron is missing. Um, so I'm gonna do a smooth chignon in the back, but that is now there for later. Okay, next is, oh, the big coup de gras. Right, okay. I've styled this toupee last night watching the Borgias, so I don't have to deal with it. But if you wanted to do this from scratch, where you just stick it on your head and like pull your, you know, pull all the hair up over the donut and all that, whatever, it just takes longer. So I thought I'd try, okay, where are all the pins? Doing this the night before. Nope, there's still one pin in here. Bear with me. <laughs> all right. 
toupee or not toupee? <laughs> That's the question. Okay, so I have a knit base. I've got my wig clips. I'm gonna undo these. That one's backwards. And I'm just gonna, okay. <laughs> Stick this, now I'm gonna start slumping so you can actually see what I'm doing. Stick this on here. Clip it into place. I'm here for it, whatever we end up with. <laughs> see more. Yes, whatever we end up with, we'll see. Right now, it's a hot mess. It's chaos before order. Or just cover it. Oh, clip, go. Cover it in a cap. Okay, so that's mostly on there. Oof. A lot of pins are going to go in this, so don't worry. Now, I've got my hair pins. Um, I have two different sizes of these. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. Focus camera. This is a big U-shaped pin. You can get these at Sally Beauty Supply. This is the small, small one. They come in a little thing that looks like this. And these are great because you can stab them into your hair cushion. Um, they take a little bit getting used to. You can't just kind of like stick them through hair. You kind of have to twist them through hair. But this is mostly what I use. I don't really use bobby pins, only for certain things. So I'm going to take a really big U pin and I'm going to kind of like stab it in and secure this to my hair as best I can so that it doesn't ow, move around too much. My own hair being worked into this is going to also secure this into place, but while we are working with it, we don't want it to kind of like tilt to the side or do anything weird. So it's very important that, ow, <laughs> That this actually be like on your head. Funny story about this is when we did um, Leia's hair at the last National Arts Club um, event, I did not get her ski slope cushion secured to her head particularly well and so it started to kind of like fall backwards <laughs> throughout the evening, which still looked accurate oddly enough, um, but it was a little disconcerting. <laughs> it was way back there at the time, so by the end of the night. Okay, so now the fun part, which is also oddly the easy part. Okay, so I'm just going to lightly brush comb my hair up. I have a cushion here, so I'm going to pull my hair up and just, this is kind of hard to see without a mirror, stick my hair pins into my cushion. I don't know if you can hear them kind of slide in there. My cushion is stuffed with um, cork, granulated cork, so it's lightweight and it's easy to stab into. Okay, I saw some comments, so let me go back up. This is amazingly large. Oh, but Sarah, it could be so much bigger. <laughs> you look like that villain on The Incredibles. <laughs> I shouldn't take that as a compliment, but I'm, I am right now. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Smoothing pinning more pins and you can see it's kind of like sticking that's because I I've got pomade in here and I've crimped my hair so it's kind of sticking to the toupee hair now I'm not combing this super like into it I'm just very lightly brushing not combing it over the top just to smooth it a little bit I should just pull a whole bunch of these out and because it's a hedgehog, I can just leave the ends sticking straight up, which is honestly my favorite thing ever. Because it's like chaos in the hair. Who cares? Get in there, please. There we go. Okay. Now, hairpins in the 18th century could be all lengths, and they were really sharp. I like the ones that they've found that are like this long. So like, and those were designed, of course, to be stabbed into the hair cushions. Um, Hannah asks, okay, uh, First, Lori asks, where do you get the toupee? Uh, you make it using the instructions in the American Duchess Guide to 18th Century Beauty. I will put the link um, to that book in the description when this is done. We sell it on our website. You can also get it on Amazon, other places. It's made of hair extensions on a knit base. And this is actually my 1780s one, so it's quite wide. But you can make a toupee any shape. Toupee is just the name for the hair at the 
the crown, like the middle of the head. Um, okay, with longer hair like mine, which wouldn't stick up at the front? Do you stuff it down in the cushion? Yes, because there is a hole in the middle of the cushion. So if we go back, using this for an example, if we go back and look at the donut or you know whatever size you make it, you just like stick it down in there and then you have a nice smooth you know hair that goes and you don't have to deal with that. Now, let's say you had really long hair. It's 1778 or so. You could actually buy a cap made of hair sticking up at the front at, at the top. It was the um, bonnet all the was it bonnet? It was a Harrison cap and I can link to that. It's in the blog post that I have on Harrison. So you could just wear like a cap with this going on on the it's literally a hair hat and I love that. I just love that concept. Okay. Looking pretty fun and silly. And all of my creepy curls from earlier. There's a little bit of teasing because I'm kind of bald there. Up, 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 and away. Okay. So that's pretty much the front of my hair sorted. I dig it. It's cool. But I probably have kind of a hot mess going on in the back because I need to cover all of this. It's all visible back there. And I'm going to cover that with my buckles. Let me pin this in a little bit better. So it's not so standy uppy. Okay. It looks more like a pomegranate than a hedgehog. <laughs> okay. What are your recommendations for places to order hair to make hair pieces? I got my hair extensions on Amazon. I'm not sure from what seller. It's just really important that if you're going to pomade and powder the hair that it needs to be real hair. It doesn't have to be expensive, like super expensive, um, but it just needs to be real hair. Okay. Uh, Jennifer pomegranates, 18th century plus pomegranates, like it's a, it's a thing. So yes, <laughs> look at my little hedgehog spikes. These are ridiculous. I love it. <laughs> Oh, um, Sarah says she found real hair extensions at Sally Beauty. Yes, so that's just the key thing. The The color doesn't, like, you'll notice this is kind of red in my hair. It doesn't have that much red in it. Um, the color doesn't have to be exact. You just want it to be close because when you pomade and powder everything, it's going to kind of bring the color closer together. Lori says, hope it's not too complicated. Um, I'd wind up sitting with my back to the wall so nobody can see the back of my head. Well, that might be how this video goes right about now when I start to do the back of my hair. Okay, so I've got my buckles and we're gonna we're gonna pin these in. I think I'm gonna use bobby pins for this part. <laughs> it's gonna be so fun. Um, even though bobby pins didn't exist. Buckles like these. If I can just oh, missed it. Get that in there. <laughs> yeah. Because the hair is kind of hard doing the glue buckles. Oops, I've got an escapee. I can't get the U-shape hair pins through it. So I'm going to use the bobby pins. And please don't send the hordes after me. So that looks pretty cool so far. Let's do buckle number two. Hmm, maybe it's this one. <laughs> I feel like I have toilet rolls on the side of my head. And I'm okay with that. To look. Okay. Okay, first set of buckles ready. <laughs> Caps can hide a world of sin too, right? Sarah asks, yes. So if this is like, what's going on back here? You can always just cover that with a cap. But because I'm doing the Harrison, I don't have a, a cap. I might 
do like flowers if I can find them back there. Um, but yeah, like if you have a bald spot on the back of your head, maybe your hair wasn't long enough or you're just like, this is crap, just stick a cap on. Amber says, the ends on longer hair tend to fade and not match the hair close to the scalp, so it looks natural. Yeah. I'd probably go slightly, slightly lighter rather than darker for my hair pieces. Yeah, so whatever the closest hair color you find um, will absolutely work because, of course, the color kind of undulating color is perfectly fine. Toilet rolls implies you had toilet paper conspicuous consumption. I actually have not bought toilet paper at all during this. Um, and my toilet roll cardboard things have become seed planters. So recycling, woohoo, not actually used for curls. <laughs> uh, Linda asks, what was used to pin the hair in place? Um, I talked about this a little bit earlier, but they are, these are all mixed up now. They're U-shaped pins. You can get these at in two sizes at Sally Beauty Supply. That's primarily what I'm using um, to pin these faux buckles in, I'm using bobby pins, so it's a little, like, not, not kosher, but whatever. All right, so I think at this point I should probably look at what is going on here. I can kind of see it. All right, so I need to cover all of this stuff back here. Ah, you're gonna get to see, like, all of this. <laughs> Um, but before I do that, I actually want to deal with the chignon because I want to put the buckles over the end of the chignon. So, alrighty. I think the best way to do this is to kind of like tie off a ponytail, but quite a long way down, like down here. I'm going to try and do this by feel, so forgive me if it sucks. And then the chignon is just looped up. Where is my, there we go. It's a little twisty, but I'm just gonna loop it up kind of like, like so. Curl that like a little pin curl. And just pin that, oopsie, into place. Hopefully that doesn't look too crappy. Eh, it's not the best. Okay, so I might do a couple bobby pins here. Okay, <laughs> let's see. While I was doing that, what kind of comments do we have? Watching you waking up while making 24 hours of it. Nope, that medical feeds. For, I don't know what that is. Okay. This is why I should proofread these before I read them out. Alrighty, so chignon is up. There are so many different ways that you can do the chignon. You can braid it, which is honestly one of the easiest things to do. You can loop it up like that. You can twist it. You can do like up and let the ponytail kind of like curl. You can actually wear it down too in the later 70s, 1770s and really curly. That was a thing as well um, because my curling iron is missing. Um, I did want to wear them down and curly, but I don't have that, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna loop it up so it's easy. Okay, I have four of the little buckles left, so I'm gonna get in here and try <laughs> to cover my sins in the back, back here, with the old buckles. And as Sarah said, if this really goes haywire. <laughs> I'll probably just cover it with decorations of some kind. Okay, how do I access this? <laughs> What's going on here? Ah, there we go. Okay. Does that look okay? Yeah, cool. Got some spot there, so. Don't be afraid to use all your pins, all of them. 
to achieve your nefarious ends. Okay. Let's put another one here. Uh, Sarah asks, are the, oopsie, disappeared. Are the hair buckles mounted on something or are those just the layers of hair wrapped around each other? They're hair wefts. Um, hold on, let me think, where am I putting this right now? But the weft part of it kind of caused some problems. And um, to be honest, I did them around a pipe, a piece of pipe. And they were tricky to do the glue curls. I'm not the best at those. I think forgot steps. Um, when you do them where it's just teased to craziness, then that kind of get, they get fuzzier. That feels okay. Like you could stuff these with, you're not supposed to be able to see through these, which I think is hilarious because it's like down periscope. Uh, but you could stuff them with a little bit of ratted hair or something in there. Okay, I'm getting hot. <laughs> Meredith says, I love that kimono. Do you know what influence Japanese textiles had on fashion of the time? Japan, as far as I know, please excuse Lexi for barking. Japan, as far as I know, was not open to the Western world in the 18th century. Chinoiserie was like, like the Chinese um, stuff was all the rage. So there was definitely a trade with China and there were goods being made for the Western world in China. Um, so that's not a new thing. Painted silk, shoes, um, robes, like banyans, lots of that stuff coming from China and from um, other parts of the East. But Japan, as far as I know, was not a thing. So I actually don't have a banyan. I have some scraps of printed cotton that are going to become a banyan really quickly because I realize that the more that I do these videos, the more self-conscious I feel that I'm wearing something that isn't exactly accurate. But I have my shift on under this and so I don't want to flash you guys with like that. <laughs> so I, I needed something. Okay. Uh, Lenore asks, what are buckles? These round curls are buckles. Um, boucle in French. I'm actually not sure why they were called that. I'd love to, I think I need to research that a bit more, but they were called that in English too. So I just mean these sculpy, sculpy curls. Okay, so I've got four on now. I probably have gaps going on here. It actually looks all right. I mean, they're like a totally different color, but whatevs. That needs to be pressed down. Okay, let's get in there. Sorry about the uh, white balance, guys. <laughs> And I have two buckles left, so I'm going to stick these over where I pinned my chignon up. This is the first time I'm using these buckles. I made them last night, so forgive me if they're not perfect. Okay, and my little, my little one. Okay, so Ingrid says, yeah, boucle in... in in uh, French means curl, so it's it's an English um, bastardization of the word, the French word for curl, which makes total sense when I think about it. Alrighty. <laughs> Lori says, my husband's going to flip out when I order a big box of hair. Excellent. All right. Okay, so I think I'm almost done. It looks... <laughs> It looks all right. I mean, for kind of like haphazard, that could be in a better placement. Let's, let's pin that down in a different place. A little bit more. <laughs> Eve says, cover some of the gaps with bows. You bet we're going to cover them with bows and flowers and all kinds of stuff. Okay, okay. So at this point, this is what we have. I'm pretty happy with this right now, but it is also it's still not a hedgehog yet. I mean, this is like the hedgehog part here, but the main hallmark, there's two main hallmarks of the hedgehog, spiky uppy bitty, bitty toppies and a ribbon tied around that. Now the ribbon seems to be very much a 
keep this all in place thing going on. So, ooh, my ribbon's a bit short. <laughs> so I'm gonna <laughs> get this going here. Um, I was going to tie that, but I guess I won't now. Okay. I don't know how this looks. Oh, it looks pretty good. There is no right or wrong way in how to put the ribbon on. You can have multiples. You can do one, you can do two, you can do pearls if you want to. You could do a garland of flowers. It is just the headband that I think is meant to keep your um, your spiky top. Because it's sticking straight up. Like You need to secure that somehow. <laughs> Get in my head. Let you know go through. Ow. Whoopsie. Let's try that again. Like You have to keep things in place somehow. So that is, I think, how they were... Buckles just fell off. <laughs> One sec. Wow. Good job, Laura. That obviously wasn't pinned on there particularly well. Okay. <laughs> what is going on here? <laughs> All right. Funny thing is, none of the pins in that buckle actually came out with it, so they're still in there somewhere. Buckle down! <laughs> okay. <laughs> I said this previously, but <laughs> don't be afraid. Honestly, do not be afraid to use a lot of pins in your hair because, like, you don't want to be going along at your dance and having, like, buckles flying off left and right. That's not cute. Okay, so I need to secure this this ribbon here kind of like that that looks kind of cool so i'm just gonna strategically pin it in various places stabbing it out stabbing myself stabbing into the hair cushion kind of wherever there we go that feels oh my god feels more secure Sarah says, I wonder how often that happened, though. Oh, uh, I'd love to, um, you know, honestly, someday we'll all probably run across a primary source that was like, her buckles were flying all over the place. I would not be surprised at that. So this feels pretty secure now. Um, I'm going to go through and kind of like check out if there's any parts like this part that's sort of making a break for it. Pin that into place. And it goes. Okay, I like it. It's, it's wild. <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm going to read some comments out. Uh, it's good to see that one of the people who literally wrote the book on aging said your hairstyle like, still deals with this kind of thing. Absolutely. Like, it is always an adventure. You know, I was just talking to a friend this morning about how I've been to events where my hair just looked so bad, where it was hot and like Jane Austen Festival. And I was like, oh, what is even going on here? And I was so self-conscious because it's like, I wrote a book on this and I look really bad today. Like, I'm just so sweaty. So yeah, we are not perfect. When you make your friends wait yeah, as you refasten your buckle. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, goes down the rabbit hole of mishaps in 18th century hair. Um, there's some great stories that it, that appeared in magazines about, like, they're satirical, but it's they're talking about the pomade and the powder being made into a paste and then like applied to the hair and and the way that they talk about their wives and daughters' hair being uh, being styled is just way too way too funny. So car <laughs> pin down the runaways. Yeah, no kidding. We're gonna pomade this a little bit more here in a second. Carrie says, not Carney, Carrie says, would these hairstyles have been done independently or would a lady have servants do these? So that's a big thing. Carrie, thank you so much for bringing that up because hairdressers were a thing, particularly male hairdressers. They would come to a lady's house 
and do their hair in the morning. There are a lot of boudoir um, paintings that show a woman in her boudoir receiving visitors, receiving the milliner, receiving the hairdresser. A lady's maid could also be a hairdresser. Um, they were <laughs> the male hairdressers that traveled around in the town doing, doing hair. Really didn't like when a lady's maid did a woman's hair because it, it threatened their jobs. Um, so I totally, you know, I understand, but so yes, so both ladies maids and professional hairdressers were going around doing hair. So this style actually coming out this well, doing it on myself, using a selfie camera to do this. I'm pretty proud of this, um, but it would not have been possible for me to do this using my own hair. So the hair pieces were the thing and the hair pieces are completely historically accurate to use. Like there is nothing that says that women did not use it. Well, let me back up. There are lots of things that say that women used hair pieces. You could buy them. They were listed for sale of the toupee, the chignon, the buckles, you know, send a swatch of your hair and we'll match it and we'll send your hair back. Like it sounds very modern, but it was what they were doing to achieve these like enormous hairstyles. <laughs> okay, um, some awesome comments here. Nord says, there's eyewitness reports about a Swedish king in the 18th century who danced with the ladies so that their hairstyles were all messed up so everyone could see who had danced with the king. Okay, so uh, I'd love to dance with the king. Like, does he dig my, my hedgehog hairstyle? I don't know yet. <laughs> Oh, this is so fun. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna try and like back it up here. Ugh, I don't have any flowers on me, but you can stick a feather in here. A lot of the Gallery de Mode fashion plates have feathers kind of like stuck at the back. Uh, this, this is, I think, done Harrison hairstyle. Left spiky at the top. Doing a little spin -a here. And it's not perfect, you know. There's a bit of a wonk going on back there, so I might stick some flowers um, in the back there before I do the shoot this this afternoon. Now, to finish this off for goodsies, I'm going to get a little bit more of the pomade, rub that on my fingers, and I'm just going to do a nice little smooth, just to stick everything back together. This is the equivalent of like, of hairspraying to make sure everything is <laughs> held in place. What is that? Get on. <laughs> Sweet, okay. And take this opportunity to like shove some more pins in here. Like I've got some weird going on there. So I'm gonna shove another pin in. Stick a pin in it right into that cushion. Come on, get in there. There we go. Okay, and I'm gonna dust this with a bit more powder which will be all over my clothes here momentarily. That's not nearly enough powder. The final dusting of powder, you know, you can be pretty light with it. You don't want chunks of powder um, along like your hairline here. So I'm gonna make sure those are smoothed out. Okay fuzzies. Now, I'm still not done. Excuse me. I'm gonna do, this isn't hair, this is makeup, but I've never actually done a video where, I love that you could just see right through this, that cracks me up. Never done a video, homemade hands, where we've put on rouge, so I'm gonna, oh my god, I can't get it open. All right, so the rouge. This is how much rouge the recipe of the book makes. Um, we've actually been sort of like nursing off of this for a while. So be aware that if you make the rouge recipe in the book, like you're gonna have rouge for the next millennia. So plenty of rouge, because you use a really, really, really little bit of this. So I'm gonna shake it up. 
I'm going to be exceedingly careful taking the lid off of this thing because this absolutely will stain everything. Ah. Textile that it touches. Okay. Now I've got the lid. Normally I would have a really little bottle, but that's also me. Yay. Okay, we're back. Sorry about that. Rouge. No rouge. Rouge. Let's try that again. Other cheek. Cheek to cheek. So I already... <laughs> I already have my foundation and, and whatnot on. You can use this right over that. I've already done like my brows and whatnot. And I'm just going to a little bit. You can layer this to your heart's content and you just rub lightly in little circles until it's all blended in. That does not feel like enough to me. So I'm gonna do some more. There's sediment in this rouge. Don't worry about it. It rubs off. So when you just rub and rub and rub and rub, the sediment dusts off shortly thereafter. That looks pretty good. A little bit more on this side. Oh, I feel so rosy. Okay, I like it. Nice. The rouge also works on your lips. Okay, but it can be a little bit drying. So after I rouge my lips, I use a little chapstick. And then I feel real pretty. Okay, I feel ready to go do my video now, which is the 1770s Polonaise and I've got my crazy 1770s Harrison hair to match. Now before I go, I'm going to go back and read some of these comments because <laughs> there were a lot while I was messing about. Okay, um, Anna, today we learned that Rouge gets YouTube fright. <laughs> yes, I'm like will not open for anything. <laughs> Would any guys want to t oh, no. tap it with hair like this? Well, it was really uh, attractive in the past, so Obviously, they did because we are here today. <laughs> Thank you for answering my question. My male hairdresser best friend will love the Ego Boost. Carrie, if you want a really fun book to read, find Leonard Autuis, um autobiography. He was the Leonard of Marie Antoinette's hair. He was his, her hairstylist. And he has a lot to say about being a hairdresser, a male hairdresser in the 1770s and 80s. <laughs> uh, what pigment is it based on? Sarah asks. You're, um, I think you're talking about the rouge. It is alkanet root. When the rouge could literally act as the most accurate foundation color for you. I don't know what quite what that means. Do you mean like it, 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 it looks nice? Um, it does look nice. The cool thing is that this particular rouge looks good on everybody. We used it on every model in the book with all different skin types and skin tones, and it looked amazing on everyone. All right, could you use the Extra Rouge's hair dye? Ooh, Emily, I don't know. Um, now, that being said, pink hair powder, I have some pink hair powder that Abby made that was made with the dried rouge, and dries in the, the sediment of it, and it, it did color it a little bit pink. As far as dyeing your hair with it, I uh, I don't know if I would try that, but if you do, please let me know, because that sounds really interesting. Um, okay, so that's the end of the comments. This is the hairstyle. I'll take some pictures. I'll take a video. We're doing the dressing video later. Uh, so thank you so much for tuning in. I'm glad it turned out good enough-ish, and I hope you found it really interesting. So thank you again. If you have more questions, you can always leave them in the comments on the video below and we'll answer them. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at American Duchess and on Patreon at American Duchess as well. So thank you. Lastly, if you want all of the down low skinny on this 18th century beauty American Duchess guide, um, I'll put a link below. That is the book in which we do all of this fun stuff. So see you guys next time. Thank you very, very much.